Welcome to the anatomy of the eye. Now, when you look at an eye, the white of the eye is called the sclera. The colored area in the middle, that circle, is called the iris. And at the very center, there's a small black circle. That is the pupil. It is through the pupil, this opening, that we are going to allow light to come into the eyeball and interpret that using our nerves and our receptors, interpret that as vision. This is going to be what we'll paint today. It is a cross section of the eyeball. We see here the front with the iris, the pupil is the opening in the middle, and then we have this whole space filled with what we call humor, vitreous humor to be exact. To help give you guys a really good grasp of the layering of the exterior of this eyeball, I have a very low budget example of an eye. Now, this would be the sclera, which is the outer white of the eye. It surrounds the entire thing except for right in front where we have the pupil and the iris. Now, this sclera layer is pretty tough, pretty fibrous, and it's going to be white. When you remove the sclera and look underneath, our next layer is brown. It's going to be a dark brown color and it's called the choroid. Now you don't see this because the sclera covers it, but on our models it shows up. Whenever you start to cut away the outer edges, you're going to be able to see the brown choroid. Now if you remove the choroid, we then see the vitreous humor and the retina. The ball is going to be the space inside of the eyeball, that, which is filled with vitreous humor. But this retina is going to be a layer which has red blood vessels and blue veins, and it's going to be where your rods and your cones are located. Now, the retina lines the entire cavity of the eyeball, and if you remove it, then all we have is that space which is filled with the vitreous humor. So with this cross section of an eyeball, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint some of that outer sclera. Remember, it's the white of your eye. The sclera is not present directly in front of the eye where we see the iris and the lens that's the only place we're not going to see it. Next, we're going to add the choroid. Now it's located directly beneath the sclera. So we'll go ahead and add this in with a Sharpie. The layer below that is the retina. We're going to use some orange for that one. Oh, yellow. Now, your retina is going to line this entire cavity. So let's go ahead and just fill it in. We'll switch to a larger brush. That's the retina. Now to make this a little bit more realistic, we are going to add red lines, which are blood vessels, little tiny arteries and veins coming into and nourishing all of these cells. So we're going to paint the eye from front to back. The first thing we'll do is the first place that light is going to come into the eye. It comes in through a transparent layer called the cornea. Now this layer, add a little bit of blue. This layer has clear cells and when light hits it, they just come right through into the eye. This is where if you have a contact lens, you're gonna put right on here on the cornea. 
Now inside of the cornea, we have that colored part of the eye. If you remember on mine, it's kind of a green-brown color, so we'll paint that in a little green. This is the iris. Now this opening, when you look at someone, you see it as a black hole. That's because there's no light coming out through the pupil, it's all coming in. But when seen in cross-section, it's just an empty space. Your iris is going to have the ability to constrict and make this pupil smaller or dilate and make the pupil larger. And it can change this to bring in less light or more. So the empty space there in the middle is just the pupil. Right behind the iris and the pupil, we are going to have a lens. Our lens is very important because it is this that allows us to focus the light coming into our eye through our pupil. Your lens can change shape, whether you're looking at something far away or close up, it changes the focus. Now, if you're like me, you need to wear glasses. Not all the time, but whenever I'm driving, I have to wear them because my lens is not able to change shape to focus correctly for things that are far away. So I use glasses to help focus that light and allow me to see it sharply. Your lens is supported by suspensory ligaments. Now, these look, almost look like little strings and they come off of the lens and they hold it in place, support it, and they can kind of pull it and stretch it and change that shape a little bit. Those ligaments are attached to an area called the ciliary body. Now the ciliary body surrounds the lens completely, 360, and it comes out, you can see it from the side here, like so. Now this is going to help hold our lens in place using those ligaments. completely surrounds that lens. There is a line of separation between the ciliary body So our ciliary body is surrounding our lens and our retina is filling the entire cavity. The border between the two, where they meet, is called the aura serrata. Right, let's talk for a minute about that humor again. Your eye is divided up into two cavities. The anterior cavity, anterior meaning towards the front, just below the cornea, above the lens, all of this is called the anterior cavity, and all of this is called the posterior cavity. In the anterior cavity, we have what is called aqueous humor. So we'll paint that in a light, very faint blue. The aqueous humor fills this cavity. Now the vitreous humor is going to fill the entire posterior cavity. So all through here, it's filled with that almost jelly-like fluid called vitreous humor. Now we don't have lab dissection this semester, unfortunately, but if we did, whenever we dissect the cow eyeball, you occasionally have that vitreous humor come squirting out. All right, we are gonna move to the back of the eye now. Now the back of the eye is where all of that light is going to be aimed and focused at. We can change the shape of our lens. We can change the opening of our pupil to allow however much light we need. 
is going to come into the eye and be focused on this little spot right here called the fovea centralis. Now the fovea centralis is where you're going to have the greatest concentration of receptors that'll give you fine details. So when you're trying to read, you want the light focused here. Now, if you are nearsighted or farsighted, your eye might focus the light here, or maybe it's trying to focus it here. Your lens cannot adjust its size to bring the focus of the light right there. When it does, if, you're very, if you have no need for glasses and you have very sharp vision, 2020, then your eye naturally can change that lens and get the light right to the fovea centralis. Below the fovea, we have this large thing coming out of the back of the eye. What that is, is our optic nerve. So we're gonna paint that in some very bright yellow. Now our optic nerve, if you recall from our other classes, comes from the back of the brain, crosses at the center with that optic chiasm, and then comes to the eye. Your nerve is getting a lot of information, sensory input. So it's a very large one coming into the back of the eye. We're also gonna add some blood vessels inside of that. So all of our input coming from the eye will leave via this large optic nerve. Now this area right here is called the optic disc. This is the spot where we're not going to have any of those rods and cones trying to bring in the light and interpret it. Instead, we're just gonna have the nerve. So this area is kind of like a blind spot. In animals, there is an additional layer called the tapetum lucidum that's located in this posterior cavity and it helps reflect light. So it makes it a little easier for them to see in the dark. And whenever you shine a light at one of these animals and their eyes reflect like great glowing lights, you bounced it off of the tapetum lucidum and brought that light right back out. But we don't see that on our human eyeballs. Here we have our eyeball, but we also added a few features that kind of give you a reference. Here's the nose, and here's some eyebrows. This eyeball has had the outer eyelid removed, so we're able to see all of the muscles that surround the eyeball, and when they contract, it's going to pull the eyeball that direction. So we'll go over these. Now these muscles are going to attach to the sclera of the eye, the white part. We're going to see a medial rectus muscle. This medial muscle is located on the same side as the nose, and when it contracts, it pulls the eye this direction towards the nose. We have a superior rectus muscle. This one, if contracted, pulls the eyeball up lateral rectus out and inferior rectus down. There are two other muscles that are actually going to pull the eye in what is called an oblique direction. Think about it like 45 degrees. There's one that comes and attaches to the eyeball coming from this direction and pulls it up. And another one that comes from below and pulls it down. One other feature that we have to know about is the lacrimal gland. Now the lacrimal gland is located right here, laterally to the eye. And it's here that we are going to be producing the tears, kind of an eye wash that filters down across the eye, keeping it moist and lubricated. And then it gets run out into the nose through ducts. 
And with that, we've now covered all of the terms that we're going to have on the eyeball for the lab practical.